Here we are in the plush workshop. And today we're going to have a look at Olin's TTX. I'm going to show you what everything does inside it. I'm going to show you some of the cool, cool technology that's in these that other shops don't have. So let's get into it. So we'll clamp that in. First things first, they are charged with nitrogen. So we need to get the nitrogen pressure out of the bladder. So we'll decharge this now. Nope. I don't know where any of the tools are. There we go. There we go. We found it. We found it. As you can tell, I uh, don't work in here as much as I used to. Pop that in there, get rid of that pressure. I hear a little hiss. Done. That's now safe. Um, if we were to just undo this with all the pressure in, it would push all the fluid out at quite a rate of knots, and you get quite wet um, and oily. I'd love to say I've never done it, I've definitely done it. Um, the first thing we need to do is take this stop cap off. And we do that with a little, uh, I don't know what you call that, wedgie bobber, that's called. That's why this has got this little wedge on, so you can get that underneath and just give it a little tap. And this stop cap will start to come up. There we go, so that's that off. Oh, boring. All right. Well, we haven't got one of the little helper tools. So without that tool, we'll just do this instead. And then if I'm good, I'll be able to do this in one go. No, <laughs> I can't do it in one. Go on, who can do this in one go? Easy peasy. Easy peasy. No, yours is better. Mine's a bit more pointy. Yeah. Oh, yours is way better. Oh, oh yes. Not that I made it work. <laughs> That, we'll edit that. That's, we'll do it in, that's in one. Whoa, I did it in one go. Wow. Okay, that's the little circlet that holds the shop together. Now we are into the inner workings of the shop. Bearing, some people call it a seal head. Um, this is the bit that the shock slides up and down. This one's a little bit sticky actually. It's a bit cold in here, but we'll address that. We'll have a little look. But that's your damper shaft here. This is your piston and your piston glide ring. All the fluid flows in and out of this piston and that creates the restriction in the shock that uh, creates your damping effect. We've now got an empty shock, an open shock with damper fluid in. So we need to pour that out. Now we can take out the um, pressure cap fingers. Yep, yeah. look at that one, that was good. Another little circlip. And this is where we need our first special tool. That's the one. Daz has got all the tools. I should have, should have, should have kicked Daz off of his station. Shouldn't like that. Yeah. It is the most well equipped station. It is a good, good service station. So, screw this in here. It just allows us to uh, pull the pressure cap out. There we go. That's our pressure cap. And that's the thing we put the uh, nitrogen needle through earlier. That holds all the, all the pressure back. You can see this rubber. Um, puck here, a little pressure seal. A bit more fluid in there now. You can just see inside this part here, the piggyback. Next up, we can take the adjuster assembly out and the compression assembly. Now this is all housed in this little part here and there's some cool stuff going on in here. So I'll just whip everything off. Again, pretty standard tooling. Oh. PB Swiss Allen keys, by the way. The best Allen keys on the planet. Thank you, PB Swiss, for letting me buy these from you. <laughs> there we go. This is. Wee. So that is our low speed compression adjuster off. So I can now take the compression assembly off. We're on to specialist tool number two. Has anyone got an Olin's castle tool? Turret tool. You know, the one that looks like a castle. I call it a turret tool because it looks like a turret. You can actually see on this, it's got a blue valve. So this blue anodized valve denotes that that assembly is two settings of high speed. And then the last setting is like a, a pedal platform. The gold version of this is three settings of high speed and no pedal platform. So you usually find the blue valve on the shorter stroke shocks because they're kind of more for enduro shocks. But there's also a gold valve that you'll find on the longer shocks, the downhill shocks. 
However, we can interchange them. So if you don't want a lockout on your shorter, shorter stroke shock, we can put a gold valve in your shock and you get three settings of high speed. So that is our valve assembly and shim arrangement, much like the main piston. Um, but I'll explain what they do in a sec. And then there's a little tiny hole here uh, that adjusts our, our low speed compression flow. And I'll, I'll take this apart and show you what all the bits do. Um, but it, we'll leave that for a second and we'll come back to our main piston. On a twin tube system, you're allowing the fluid to actually go to circulate through the shock and back behind the piston. So the pressure difference between the front and the back of the piston uh, are more similar. They're still different, but they're more similar to each other. Um, and that's what these twin tubes do. They allow a flow of fluid when you compress the piston. So I can actually put this in here. So when you compress the piston through the tube, through here, it pushes fluid out here, but fluid is allowed to go back behind the piston by having two tubes. And that helps to reduce the damper pressure. So we'll take the main compression assembly uh, apart now, which is this, this part here. This is the piston glide ring. You can see the two sets of shims either side of the piston. These help to displace the fluid and we can actually change these shims, these little thin, thin washers, to change how much resistance or how much force it takes to push that piston through the fluid. It's a little bit like having a plate underneath the water in your, in your sink, you're washing up, uh, and you try and pull the plate out of the water really fast. You've got to displace all the, all the fluid off the plate to get it out of the water. If you drill holes in that plate, you can actually tune how much force it takes to get that plate out of the washing bowl. And that's exactly what this does. So the less holes there are in it, the stiffer it is. So it does make it slightly harder to eat off though. <laughs> holes in a plate? Yeah. Yeah. You can hold the plate up though, couldn't you? Above you and eat from underneath. Yeah. Yeah. You could rain you could rain peas down. Cool. I never tire of doing that. Okay, so now we can take this compression assembly off. I'm gonna use my Nipex pliers. You've never seen these before. You, you have to go out and buy some of these. Much like PB Swiss uh, Allen keys. These are a go-to in our workshop. Parallel push pliers, so they're like a fully adjustable spanner, except when you lean on them, they actually increase the clamping force so you don't slip at all. So that is our top of our assembly off, seal head, We've got our stop cap, bump stop, and then we're left with the shaft and the rebound needle, which you can just about see in the top there. Luckily Ben's got a good camera, and you can just see there's a little, there's a little angle on this needle, and that is the thing. That is the thing that adjusts the flow of fluid back through the piston on the rebound stroke. So the further that rebound needle is protruding into this hole, the more of the hole that it covers, the more restriction there is with the fluid coming back on, on, on low speed rebound. High speed rebound has a separate circuit, but I'll talk about that in a sec. So that's gone well. Some people call this a adjuster shaft or a metering rod sometimes. So that comes out there. The main event then. Let's start looking at shims. Well, actually I can show you the piston architecture now. You can see all these complex flow paths and holes. These round ones here are all um, compression flow. So that's when you sit on the bike or you get a bump, the flow of fluid is flowing through these holes, creating a certain amount of resistance. They then whack into, or the fluid whacks into these shims, pushes the shims out of the way, and that's how we can tune the resistance. On the way back, it goes through these other little holes here. So this flow path here, and this flow path here on rebound stroke, and pushes these shims out of the way. So that is your rebound shim stack. And we can measure these shims. So we measure the diameter and the thickness. We can compare that to the Olin's tunes. And Olin's give us tune sheets 
and they actually spec for us based on a rider's weight or the bike's leverage which combination of shims to use so for instance if i was to move this shim out of this stack so that we just have these shims here the amount of fluid that's going to be displaced uh, will be less which is kind of counterintuitive so the stiffer it is the more fluid it displaces the more force it will take to get the piston to move through the fluid with olin's it's doubled up with a secondary valve uh, to tune high speed and low speed. This is actually called a base valve, and then this is your, your compression valve set. So there's a second set of shims in here, and that's where things can get really complex. So we maybe won't go into that today. So that's our rebound shim stack. Compression shim stack. So it's just two shims on this one. Quite a simple, quite a simple shim stack. There's some spacer shims here, but we, we can ignore those. And also this curved shim on Olin's that applies pressure to the shim stack. Most shocks uh, will have a shim lift plate. So the, the shims will actually reach a point where they touch something that stops them from over, over flexing basically and then snapping, which is not what you want. This does the opposite. So it's actually round the other way. So it's like a preload. So you're preloading the shim. So slightly different to other, other manufacturers, but I can show you these shims now how flexy they are. So you can see it there flexing away. Much like a leaf spring on an old truck or an old, uh, an old horse and cart carriage. Um, they flex out the way and the stiffer they are, the, 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 fir the firmer the spring is basically. So they, those are your shins. We've got this little guy up here. I don't know if you can see this but it's actually got some rounded parts on it and then two flats at different, different distances away from each other. Now, what they do is as you turn your adjuster, this is the black adjuster on your shock, high speed adjuster, they actually cover more or less of that shim, changing the fulcrum point of, of the shim essentially. Some suspension components can be absolutely tiny, 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 tiny little bits. Um, in here actually there's another needle that is pretty small and that's basically a mini version of, of the rebound assembly that we looked at the little needle uh, and that is low speed compression um, high speed compression is all dealt with through the shims low speed compression is another needle inside a shaft exactly the same as that setup the clicks that you feel from your high speed lever are these ball bearings and these springs jumping up and down on these little these little detent holes here so the the ball bearings pop in and out of these little holes giving you three clicks so three settings the rest of this is the compression valve when we talk about tuning with Olin's all we're doing is controlling how much fluid is displaced into the exact same shim assembly on this part here um, the less shims we have, the less fluid is displaced into this valve. Cool, so those are all the bits, that's what everything does. I've got a bit of a job on now to put them all back together and remember how to do it. Shocks magically back together. You missed a big stage, but it's pretty much exactly what I did before, just in reverse. In fact, play the film in reverse, the video in reverse, and you'll see how to put it back together again. We need to go and bleed this and charge it. We're going to use our vacuum pump or vacuum bleed machine to actually uh, fill this full of fluids. Still got a bit of fluid in. Uh, and then that's going to purge the shock of any air. We don't want any air at all in the system. Um, then we're going to fill it full of nitrogen. We're going to dyno test it on our hand uh, dyno, our shock squasher, and just check the function. Um, and then that is a shock that can go out to a customer.